So coaches build a relationship and coaches come alongside to help us reflect on what God is doing. And third, coaches will also help us to refocus. And so in Acts chapter 11, verses 19 to 21, we read the story as it continues that the first time we meet Barnabas, he is introduced to us as one who sold some property, gave the money in a generous way, building relationship with the apostles. He was great at building relationships. And then in Acts 9, we see that he's great at also helping people reflect on what God is doing as he introduced Saul, the changed man, to the apostles. And now we see him in Acts chapter 11, when the church of Jerusalem hears that there's a new church in Antioch, and they send someone to Antioch. Who will they send? Well, they, saw, they sent someone who would come alongside this new church and not try to be over them or dictate to them, but someone who would encourage them. And so they sent the son of encouragement. Barnabas. And when he came, it says in Acts chapter 11, now those who had been scattered by the persecution in connection with Stephen traveled as far as Phoenicia and Cyprus and Antioch, telling the message only to Jews. Some of them, however, men from Cyprus and Cyrene went out to Antioch and began to speak to the Greeks, also telling them the good news about the Lord Jesus and the Lord's hand was upon them. And a great number of people turned to the Lord. And when word of this reached Jerusalem, they sent Barnabas. And when he came, he was glad at the grace of God in this new church. And what does he do? He helps them to refocus on the most important thing. And that is that they would be faithful to the Lord. And that's one of the things that a Barnabas does as well. It's not that they give no direction. Sometimes they will give a refocusing direction. This can be very, very helpful when we're facing a problem and we need someone to help us reflect on what God is doing, but we also need somebody to help us to reflect on perhaps what some of the options are, what some of the principles are, some of the things that we need to have in our mind as we move ahead, as we move forward. And so a Barnabas will help us to reflect and to refocus. A coach will help us see the difference between the trivial and the true task. A coach will help us to see next steps that are possible without dictating them. A coach doesn't have his own agenda. He's not trying to tell the people what to do, but just to help them to see the principles of God and perhaps some of the pathways of the Holy Spirit. And so refocusing is a very important skill. And it's, there are times when we need someone to come alongside of us who is a Barnabas, who has built a relationship, who's helped us to reflect on what God is doing. And then they help us to refocus on perhaps what it is that God would have us do next. And so for a whole year, Scripture goes on to say in Acts chapter 11, the Scripture says that uh, Barnabas saw in this local, in this church of Antioch that the need that they had was for more good teaching, more good preaching. And he thought of a guy that he knew in Tartus that he knew known years before, and it was the Apostle Paul, whose name had been changed from Saul to Paul. 
And so he went to Tarsus. Tarsus. He brought Saul with him to Antioch. And for a year and a half, they taught the disciples in Antioch. And what Barnabas is doing here, that is one of the roles of a coach, is that he, as he looked at the church of Antioch, he saw that they needed something very significant, and he helped them by pointing them in the, in the direction and even going and getting Saul of Tarsus, Paul, and bringing him back and this is the next stage of what a coach will do, and that is that they will resource those that they're serving. Now, the way that Saul research, or the way that Barnabas resourced this church is he recruited another person who needed to be on the team. There's other ways that we can be resourced. This doesn't mean that. Barnabas just hands out money. Sometimes when we hear the word resources and being getting, getting resources, we think, oh, that means that we need somebody who will finance us, somebody who will give us money, somebody that will get involved in our lives that way. But actually, that's the opposite of what God was doing with Barnabas because in Acts chapter, 13, in Acts chapter 11, as we continue to read in the story, after Barnabas went and got Saul and they taught the church for the next year and a half and great numbers of people were coming to the Lord and the disciples were called Christians at Antioch first, during this time some prophets came from Jerusalem to Antioch and one of them was Agabus and he stood up and through the Spirit predicted that a severe famine would spread over the entire Roman world. And this happened during the reign of Claudius. And the disciples, each according to his ability, decided to provide help for the brothers living in Judea. And this they did, sending their gift by the elders, to the elders by Barnabas and Saul. When we came to Russia as missionaries in 1992, we met a number of church planters and they were looking for resources in the form of money. And so there were some church planters that our organization gave a certain amount of money to every month. But we said that this will last about three or four, maybe five years, and then the money will stop and you need to have been teaching your people to give so that the church has its own budget, its own money from the generosity of its own people. Well, as I look back, I think that what we did in giving money was a mistake. Because notice what God did with this baby church. Barnabas didn't bring in money from Jerusalem. What God did is he sent in a prophet named Agabus and challenged the church from the very beginning to not be looking to receive, but to be looking to give. And in fact, they were challenged to give for famine relief for a famine that hadn't even occurred yet. It was predicted to be in the future. But God wanted to teach this church at its very beginning that it's more blessed to give than to receive. And that that's the core value of generosity that a church needs. If it's going to be healthy and growing, receiving resources from God and then being generous to resource others perhaps. But this word resource, don't get confused. It's not mainly about money. It's mainly in the idea of resourcing in a coach will point a person in the direction of the help that they might need. Pointing them perhaps to an internet site, pointing them to a book pointing to them to somebody that they need to talk to. All of these are forms of resourcing another person. And so this kind of a relationship, I hope you can see, is so valuable because it's somebody who cares about us and we care about them. It's somebody who will help us reflect on what God is really doing. 
It helps, it's someone who will help us to refocus on the principles that we need to be thinking about right now as we move ahead. It's somebody who will point us in the direction of resources, but not just have a bank and hand out money. And finally, there needs to be the constant review of this relationship. And in Acts chapter 14, verse 23, after Paul and Barnabas are sent by the church of Antioch to plant churches, we're told here that Paul and Barnabas appointed elders in each church and with prayer and fasting committed them to the Lord in whom they put their trust. And then the scripture says they went on back to their home church in Antioch and reported that they had completed the work that God had called them to do. And they celebrated all that God was doing. And in the review of a relationship, this is something that's very, very important to review the successes, to review the victories, to talk about what God has done. That's part of reviewing. And in a coaching relationship, it's also important to review, is it time for the relationship to change? If we've been meeting every month, is it time to no longer meet every month, but just from now on to continue to pray for each other? Is it time for the relationship to pivot? Or is it time for the relationship to continue? This is all what is done in that time of review as we rejoice in what God has done. We review where we are, and then we seek an agreement on whether it's time to continue to meet and interact and walk side by side, or whether it's time to go in different directions. And you remember the end of the story with Paul and Barnabas that in Acts chapter 15, they had such a sharp disagreement over John Mark that they decided to go different directions after a rather heated argument. Because the word there that's used for a sharp disagreement is the same word that's used for being easily provoked with each other. So they were provoked, they were upset, they had a serious disagreement, they went in different directions. And sometimes that's the way a relationship with a mentor or a coach or a Barnabas ends. And When it ends that way, it's more difficult. I found that that's happened to me, but it was worth the risk. It was worth relating to that person, it was worth reflecting with them and refocusing life with them and resourcing. We probably should have reviewed a little earlier and said now it's time to pivot and change our relationship rather than waiting till the sharp disagreement. So I hope this is helpful to you as you reflect on what I believe is a need in each one of our lives and that is that God might give us a Barnabas. We invite you to participate in the International Bible Teaching and Gospel Sharing Project. Whether these Christian expanded educational opportunities will become available to people around the world depends on all of us. We very much need and appreciate your prayer and financial support. For more information, please visit tvsseminary.com.